Sally Morley has asked about the currency arrangements in independent Scotland and how the process of setting interest rates would be taken forward. And what we believe as the Scottish Government is that an independent Scotland should establish a currency union with the rest of the United Kingdom, which would have as the lender of last resort the Bank of England, and that we would operate on the same currency, the pound, which is our currency just as much as it is the rest of the UK's currency, right across the current area of the United Kingdom, which would be a sterling zone. That would give us the advantage of being able to operate in an integrated financial services market. It would give us the opportunity for businesses both north and south of the border to be able to trade without there being any increased costs through transaction costs if there was a different currency arrangement in, in both countries. So the currency union proposal makes sense for both Scotland and for the rest of the United Kingdom. And that's the principal reason why I think the currency union will be accepted by the rest of the UK. There's another reason, of course. George Osborne has essentially said that uh, he wouldn't sign up to a currency union because, um, he, uh, and, uh, because he would want to argue that the rest of the UK would be the continuing state. Well, if he argues that case, he argues essentially for the UK to take on uh, the assets of the current United Kingdom, but also all the liabilities. And I just can't believe that George Osborne is going to let the people of Scotland off taking their fair share of the UK debt, which you know I'm, I'm perfectly happy for Scotland to take its fair share of the current level of UK debt. It's not a debt that we've run up, it's been run up by the rest of the United Kingdom, by chancellors like Alistair Darling and George Osborne, but you know we've got to take our, our share of that debt. But if the UK government argues that they should continue as the um, as the UK, that they should take on the assets of the Bank of England, that we should have no access to those assets, then they walk into the argument that they should take on the full liabilities and debts of the UK. So that's the reason why we'll have a currency union, because they can't possibly sell that to the rest of the UK. Now one of Sally's points was about the setting of interest rates, and of course what happens now in all circumstances to which an independent Scotland could be compared is that interest rates are no longer set by politicians. They're all set by independent monetary institutes. In the case of the UK, it's the Bank of England. In the Eurozone, it's the European Central Bank. In the United States, it's the Fed. So here in Scotland, our position would be no different. Interest rates would be set by the Bank of England. And the mandate we would ask the Bank of England to fulfil is to make sure they set interest rates in the appropriate fashion for the whole of the United Kingdom as they do just now. And that would be their responsibility to take that forward. Now, what that would mean is that an independent Scotland would be able to exercise all of the controls that come from independence over a whole range of different functions uh, in, in policy terms, over employment, over taxation, over the stimulation of the economy, over all these different areas where we currently don't have control. And our partnership with the United Kingdom through the, um, the currency union would enable us to um, use the same currency to be able to trade across the border without increased costs and to make sure that uh, the people of Scotland were able to use the pound uh, in an independent Scotland just as they use the pound today.